Welcome to the Elevating Funeral Service podcast. If you want to run a successful funeral home, cemetery, or pet cremation service, you don't have to be the one that has the lowest price. You do need to be the one that offers the most value, provides the best customer experience, and clearly communicates that in your marketing. On this weekly podcast, Ellery and Welton will show easy ways to demonstrate value to families and create differentiation that helps you stand out from the competition. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Elevating Funeral Service. I'm your host, Ellery Bowker. I'm with my good friend and co-host, Welton Hong. And today we're going to be talking about things that you should be outsourcing or at least consider outsourcing in your funeral home or in your cemetery. So how are you doing, Welton? Doing awesome. Just like Good. usual, it's yeah. 116 out here. <laughs> You're joking. I'm not joking. 116? Yep, 116. Yep. Like actual okay. temperature. A actual temperature. Well, yeah. that's, that's not a temperature. That's a setting. Oh, I mean, don't you is. cook food? <laughs> nope. That is indoors, crazy. It's like sauna. Hey, oh, I got a free sauna outdoor. Good gracious. Well, that, that'll keep everyone at home. Yep. <laughs> no, one, no one wants to go anywhere. Oh, well, good. Well, how's your team doing? You guys are growing like crazy. Yeah. 62 headcounts already. Still growing. Yeah. Gracious. Man, you guys are killing it. You know, it's a different animal at this scale. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Well, it's interesting that we're talking about how much your headcount is right now because part of what we're going to talk about today is going to be about processes, right? And I know you're big into processes. Right. We're definitely big into processes and systems and outsourcing, just kind of trying to dovetail that right in there, outsourcing really falls into a lot of your systems and processes. Right. Uh, before we get started, you know, on this podcast, we have three goals just for the listeners. And maybe if you're just now joining us, uh, our whole goal on elevating funeral service is to bring an idea or a topic that will do one of three things. So the goal is to either help you create a better customer experience. Uh, the second would be to help you stand up for the competition or the third would be to help you become more profitable. Uh, this episode is going to be interesting because I think it hits on two things, right? I think it's going to definitely help you stand out from the competition doing right. some of the things we're talking about. Definitely. And then second would be help you become more profitable because the right outsourcing can actually uh, help you become a lot more profitable. Oh yeah. Um, just kind of outsourcing in, in general. Welton, you guys do a, a lot of outsourcing, a little bit of outsourcing. Tell me kind of what you guys do. Yeah. We very interesting. We do quite a bit of outsourcing on things that we are not competent in. Some of those you you and I will be talking about subsequently, payroll. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not qualified to be doing payroll, HR, those type of things, accounting, bookkeeping. So those are the ones we typically outsource. Mm -hmm. And when we're smaller, we do outsource quite a bit of other stuff, marketing as well, copywriting, direct response. When I'm when we're small, we do all sorts of those until we get a little bigger, then we start right, uh, adding more employees to be working on those type of things. Okay, awesome. So let's set the stage a little bit. Let's, let's probably try to frame in who this, who this uh, episode might be for. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a 2000 call firm, right, um, a lot of stuff probably is not going to apply to you, right? Because you're large enough, you've got departments in your organization. Right. Um, it's going to operate very differently than a 150 call firm in the right. Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, uh, conversely, if you're a brand new funeral home, you might not be able to afford to outsource anything. So right. there's probably a sweet spot in here. Um, although if you're a 2000 call firm, don't, don't, uh, don't tune us out. We, we'd love for you to, to hear what we're saying, but I think it's going to apply mainly to more just average size funeral right. homes. Um, in general, we're going to be talking about outsourcing seven different things here, and we're going to just kind of hit on each one pretty quickly. But the overarching idea here is that outsourcing could be beneficial for your funeral home if you think about it differently than you may have thought about it in the past. Right. Um, to kind of set the stage, the one thing I want to really say, and you and I talked about this earlier, Welton, is that outsourcing is not about giving up control, right? Mm -hmm. We, we, we typically have this negative connotation about outsourcing that we're just going to give up control. We're going to lose the ability to, uh, um, you know, see how things are going. We're going to lose our own hand in it, if you will. Uh, but to me, the things that I outsource are not about giving up control. It's about partnering. Um, right. And it's not about assigning a task to anyone else. It's about bringing on a partner, just like I had to bring on an employee to handle, you know, this this kind of department. Do right. you feel the same way about that? I feel the same way. Definitely. It's a partnership, right? Like personal life, I outsource a lot of things. 
right. I don't do my own lawn <laughs> anymore. Right. But, but it's a partnership between me and the landscaper. I see yeah. the end results. I don't just delegate it out. I still look at the end results. Right. When things aren't turned correctly, I give them feedback. So I do agree with you is in the beginning, it seems like it were giving away control. Now you're looking at the end result right. and it's freeing up your time, but you look at it, the actual tangible result and you give them constant feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great point. So it's not about, it's not about the giving up control. It's about partnering. Um, and what, it, what you'll get from it is the freedom to focus on what you do best. Yep. So one of the things, if you go back and look at Michael Gerber's book, E-Myth, if you've ever read that book, oh, yeah. you know, he talks about, you know, kind of being the technician or being kind of the entrepreneur. Well, when we get in business, uh, you know, first off, first day in business, you have to do everything, right? You have to be um, everything. Um, but as you're done grow, that. Right. As you, there is one core thing that you do, which is why you got in business, right? So if you're a, a painter, a house painter, for example, you know, you got in business to paint houses, but now you have to be an accountant and you have to be supply chain and you have to do all these other things. Well, as you kind of grow, you dilute your time trying to do all these other things and you, you, you end up having doing less time to do your craft. Right. So what we're hoping to do here is to say, look, if you're a funeral director, right? Your goal is to serve families. That's why you went to school. It's what you were called to do. It's what you're passionate about. It's what you want to do. But now you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this. So we're going to try to give you some ideas on things that you could outsource, maybe why you want to do it. Um, and then we'll kind of dive into each one of those. So um, let's get started. Well, in the first one, I think that funeral homes ought to and cemeteries ought to um, outsource is their accounting. Yes. Um, to me, <laughs> <left> about it. <laughs> yeah, to me, I think, uh, and I'll get your opinion on this, but to me, I think there's two different things to think about. Uh, one would be CPA stuff, taxes, and the other is accounting, which is like bookkeeping. Where am I at? When I'm saying outsourcing it, I think everyone's definitely going to outsource their taxes. If not, right. you should. Right. But what I'm talking about is I'm talking about your monthly books, right? Where are you at? Mm -hmm. um, do you guys do that? We do that. I, okay. I laugh because I used to be the one when we're small. I was the one doing all these myself. Yeah. Until we found a very, very good bookkeeper. And there's online um, QuickBooks these days. Right. I know by certain day of the month, right, that bookkeeper already has it done. And, and she sends me an email. Hey, this is done. Can you go in and double check? Right. And yeah. All sorts bookkeeping for sure. Yeah. I always had a love hate relationship with accounting, right? Like I want to know where we're at. I want mm -hmm. to see numbers, but right. I hate the process of it. Uh -huh. I mean, I hate accounting probably worse than anything else. And I just, uh, you know, as I get older, I'm going to get more vulnerable. I'm just going to say it. I can't stand uh -huh. accounting. Um, I, I go into QuickBooks and I just, ugh. but what I want to know is, are we up? Are we down? Exactly. Like, how much have we spent in this category? Can we shift stuff here to there? So what I found Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found that we outsource our accounting and I love it. Well, I've got a great, great group we outsource to. And what I really love about it is they know I hate it right. and they partner with me. They'll get on a Zoom call with me once a month now mm -hmm. and we pull up a dashboard and they'll say, okay, look, here's your revenues. Here's right. your expenses. Here's where you're up. Here's where you're down, et cetera. If I go out to a restaurant, I take a picture of my receipt. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything with it. I don't even have to bring it home with me. Right. I, right. I take a picture and I text it to them. Right? right. And they have it. And now we talk about this. Um, for me, the, the reason I think a funeral home ought to um, uh, outsource their accounting is because too many times, particularly if you're a smaller funeral home, too many times we institute what we call checkbook accounting, which means if there's money in the bank, we're mm -hmm. doing fine. And an accountant outsourcing your accounting, if you're doing it with the right person, they should give you dashboards. Right. And you should measure your KPIs, right? Your key performance indicators, you know, right. where are you at? Um, it will, if you outsource it to the right person, you will be able to once a month, just be able to review it, right? right. Not just have your books tabulated, but be able to review it, see where you're at. And are you, are you on track for what your goals are, et cetera. Right. So, right. Um, uh, and in the dashboard idea, there's a couple of um, new startups that are doing it now where pilot.com is one. I think bench.co is another one where um, man, they just tie right in the QuickBooks and they do it all for you. Nice. And it's just really, really fascinating. But the idea again behind it is for me, like I hate it. So outsourcing it for me isn't necessarily about saving me money. It's about saving my sanity. 
Right. Like, I don't want to be doing it. So for me, that's an easy outsourcing mm -hmm. one. And that um, was my favorite subject, Ellie. Really? Accounting was always my favorite subject oh. in, uh, in high school and college. So I enjoyed doing accounting. But for me personally, even I enjoy doing it, it's just a waste of my time. Yeah. It's my CEO. I need to, to really do what CEOs do. Yeah. So that actually just makes sense to outsource it out to somebody else. Yeah. For me personally, it's the time yeah. that I do save. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So for you, it's interesting. It's used the time. For me, it's the, it's the <laughs> desire. Like I love investing. Like I, I mean, I look at financial reports all day long on the investing right. side, right. but the actual, you know, categorizing this, you right. know, expense and, oh, no, not me. <laughs> okay. So number two is going to be aftercare. Um, I think that funeral homes should, if they are, if they're, if they're not big enough to have a full-time aftercare person, um, I think that they definitely should outsource aftercare because they should be doing aftercare, mm -hmm. right? They should be following up with families. They should be trying to provide for support for families. Most of the, uh, funeral homes that I see, um, think aftercare is a good idea. They just don't have the time or they don't have the resources or they don't know how to do it. So I think that is a real easy thing right. uh, to outsource. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's one of those that's important, but not urgent. So when you don't have time, you're just gonna keep delaying it, delaying it, delaying it. And then when you have time, it's finally when you do it, it's too late. Yeah. So that would be one of those things. Hey, if it's not, if it's important, but not urgent, those are also good things to outsource out. So somebody behind the scenes, they're just working on it. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great point. We should probably bring that up on another episode. I think what you're talking about is the quadrant, right? Where you're yes. saying like urgent and important, not important but urgent, right? right. Um, yeah, so that that'd be a great one to talk about yeah. on an episode. Okay. No, I absolutely agree with you. It people do know it's important, but they put it on the back burner, right. and it becomes an if you have time uh, kind of a thing. Right. But at the end of the day, relationships are everything in the funeral right. business. Like, there's yeah. nothing more important yeah. than a relationship you have with a family. And one thing we always like to say, because we know a little bit about aftercare, uh, one thing that we like to say is that aftercare is the only place you don't have competition. No. You don't have no, you don't have any competition in aftercare. You, you have that family. They're your family. It's up to you to, to lose them. So you can absolutely follow up with them. You can provide support with them um, mm -hmm. or you run the risk of them calling someone else the next time uh, right. they have a need. Um, okay. HR. Um, I definitely think you should uh, outsource HR. What do you right. think? But, but that is the one topic I hate the most. <laughs> okay. You, right. Yours is county. I hate HR stuff. And you have 62 team members. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So HR, HR is stuff. part of your world right now. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> tell me about it. So you guys outsource to a company. And what does that company do for you guys? Right. So they do, uh, for example, they do payroll. They help us with all the onboarding, paperwork, uh, payroll, um, even applying for tax IDs for different states that we, we have employee resides and they offer benefits. They're babysitting all the benefits, all the 401ks, health benefits, stuff like that. But they keep being saying, it's like whenever employee, hey, what is the policy around this? Go talk to <laughs> yeah. manage pay. We use a company called manage, go talk to them, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. We're too small still to have somebody full time or a couple of people to be focusing on HR. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome too. Because if you use the right company, like we do, you know, they can the employees can log into their own portal, right? Yeah. They can download their check stubs. They can you know make changes to anything hey. they want to make changes to. Hey. Yeah, you know, for me, um, one, you know, all the taxes, the nine forty, nine forty ones. I mean, all for different states too, because we have employees in several different states. You're right; it's a it's an absolute nightmare. Right. But for me, I think I I like to outsource the HR aspect of the company because I feel like it it helps me make sure I don't get in trouble. Right. You know, like you and I were talking about uh, uh, prior to hitting record. I wonder if if every funeral home in the country, if somebody were to ask the owner, "Hey, is it legal for your employee to smoke marijuana?" <laughs> right like like i think it's like you know they're not hiding in, in behind the building doing it anymore right i mean they're doing it before work after work so i don't know what the state laws are i have no idea you know um to me um i certainly hope and pray my employees are not smoking right. marijuana but right. you know we need to know um you know you need to know as a business owner what's the policy right. can you say something to them about it right. um so for me hr is about you know making sure i'm up to date on the laws right. you know exactly. what what the rules are what they're not um, you know, um, I'll give a shout out to Dan Assard, you know, he, uh, Stephanie Ramsey on their team does a lot of these webinars on it. 
And, and I've got to believe that these webinars are packed with people. I hope they're packed with funeral homes wanting to know, you know, right. what's the right thing, you know, to be able to do. Uh, so anyway, the right HR company will help you do handbooks, um, help you and write policies you. on, you know, sexual harassment, diversity right. training, all these other things that you should be really right. thinking about as right. an employer. But again, if my craft is serving families, if I started a funeral home to serve families, now this is another thing I've got to focus on and I'm not good at it because it's not my forte, right? right? So that's something you should, right. uh, and, and, and nothing will, will get you in trouble faster than HR issues. So right. I, yeah. I, I, I'd stress this probably over all of them. Right. Yes, remember the first thing I really leveraged the HR company is um, particular employee issues. I do not know how to deal with this employee issue. And um, they got to a point where they they role play with me. That's the first time I ever had to let somebody go. Oh. I went to their office, say, I have a right employee with this and that. Uh, what should we do about this? And I, I still remember that um, HR person told me, if you do not let that particular employee go tomorrow, I'll be very upset with you. Yeah. Yeah. They hold, really hold you accountable yeah, and they yeah. role play with me, right? How to, and gave me a script of how to terminate people and it, all those laws say you need somebody beside you as a witness, all those type of things. Right. But right. They hold you accountable to, and push oh. you to, to let somebody go or else if we're me, I was like, Oh, I'll give it under a chance. I'll give it a chance. <laughs> That's where you and I differ. How do you like, <laughs> you know, let's fix this. And if we're not fixing it, you know, I'm going to be real candid here really quick. <laughs> Getting better now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, other than for like the motivation, I like what you said about like letting you know how to do it. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, we've, we've let people before go. And quite frankly, I've, I've sent an email to my attorney to, mm -hmm. hey, am I doing this right? Because right. you know, I just want to make sure you cross the T's and dot the I's because you right. can fire somebody for cause and still, you know, uh, invite problems. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. If you're not, if you're not doing it correctly. Right. So HR be a cool one. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, another one I think is pre-need. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've studied the pre-need market quite a bit. It dovetails in with what we do a little bit. Uh, and the one thing I always think about is that unless you're a thousand call at need firm and pre-need becomes this nuisance, right? Because you're doing so much at need business right. uh, that you just don't need pre-need or you don't mm -hmm. believe you need pre-need. I think if, you know, absent that idea, I think every funeral home should be focusing on pre-need. We all know loyalty is declining. We all know that it's a transient population now. And, you know, the likelihood of, you know, 90% of your calls coming in from families you've served before is going way down. Right. Uh, so, you know, there's, to me, there's just no downside other than if you want to argue about the guarantee or non-guarantee problem mm -hmm. or, 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 you know, uh, um, you know, debate, if you will. I, I see no downside to uh, generating pre-need. That being said, if you ask a thousand funeral homeowners, uh, is pre-need a good idea? And they all would nod their head and say yes. Then if the second question is, why aren't you doing it? Then the answer would almost be the same, would be, I don't have time or right. I don't have the expertise to do it. So right. those two reasons right there, if pre-need is important, right? So again, if it's urgent, if it's important, right. And you don't have time or don't have the resource or the, or the expertise to do it, then you should outsource it. I think pre-need falls directly in, um, you know, in line with those ideas. What do you think? Yeah, I, that's one of those things that going back to, yes, it's important, but not urgent. <laughs> so people keep pushing it off. And my thought here with pre-needs is it's so critical that you're secretly stealing cases from your competitors. And that's a five, 10 years later. It's like, how come they're complaining to themselves? How come my cases keep on declining? Because those cases, right, you already stole them already. Right. <laughs> I love training. It's this one of those steel, very, very stealth mode. They yeah. just don't even know. I think it would be really interesting to hear from some funeral home owners why they don't do pre-need. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. only surmising, but my guess is they don't want to give up the commission, right? Mm -hmm. Because if it's an insurance funded uh, pre-need, then there's going to be a commission involved typically. But if you look at it and you say, okay, well, look, if I outsource to a third party marketer, the third party marketer, depending on the size of your firm and the volume, they're likely going to do all of it right? They're going to do the marketing. They're going to meet, you know, put a counselor in place. That counselor is going to meet with the families. In other words, what you're going to be doing is just trading the commission for right. a family that's on the books. Right. Um, but if you don't want to get rid of that commission, then what you're really saying is that, okay, I could go out and find that family myself mm -hmm. and keep that commission where that's where things diverge because you probably can't go find 
that family. So right. this pre-need company, this first party marketer, right, they're going to go get the family for you. Right. So if they don't do that. You're not going to have the commission to worry about giving away. Right. So to me, it's just like, it, it just doesn't make any sense why somebody would not. And you and I both know a lot of third party marketers. Well, right. you and I both right. work with a bunch right. and they are really, really good at what they do. Right. Um, so if, if to me, it's just a closed minded approach not to go after pre need, you know, what you're, right. th I think what you're doing is almost arrogantly saying, I don't really need someone else to come in here and do that. Right. Um, but at some point in time, I think they'll change their attitude on that. Because for me, if I was a funeral home owner, it would be all about protecting my market share, yeah. right? Going, getting, you know, booking these families ahead right. of time. Right. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea why, right. uh, why funeral homes push back on that. It'd be interesting to have a couple of funeral directors on here to enlighten okay. us on why, you know, they may not want to do that. Um, so anyway, um, you agree, disagree? I totally agree. It'll be fun. But yeah, exactly. If there's any listeners out there, if you could let us know, we'd love for you to have, be here on the show to let us know why having not having third party uh, versus having a third party. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, I think it kind of comes down to the size of your firm. If your firm's big enough, if there's enough pre need volume, it's going to okay. cost you zero, huh? zero to have somebody come in there and run your marketing for you. Okay. Moving on. Uh, the next uh, thing that I think you should definitely outsource is going to be social media. Um, for me, it's a couple of reasons why is because the, the damage you'll do if you don't do it right is very high, right? You can burn the algorithms. If you can think you're actually, you know, doing the right thing by posting all of this stuff, but if you're not getting engagement, if you're not getting likes and shares, you're, you're, you're voting to Google and you're, or you're, so you're, you're, you're signaling to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram that I don't like this stuff by not clicking on it. And then they're going to stop showing it. So there's right. an underlying reason why you need to be really careful about what you're posting and how you're posting right. it. What are your thoughts on outsourcing social media? All right. So I think definitely, even if you do outsource it, there's a lot of very, very competent social media agencies in this space. Mm -hmm. And even if you do outsource it to them, which is a great idea, but you still need to be involved because it's they're basically helping you out with your branding, right? Social media is a perfect tool to bring your business, get the name out there, be awareness. But if you don't provide them content, if you don't work with them closely, what they're going to be curating for you are going to be generic content. So definitely when you do partner up with a agency, you have to be really working with them a little bit more closely. But it's one of those things, again, it's not right branding awareness. Those aren't urgent stuff. That's why typically, if you look at funeral home, which is pretty interesting, they, they post in bursts. When they have time, they'll go in there for, for a short amount of time. Like in a week, they'll post a lot of content. And then you don't see anything for a couple of months. Right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But with Facebook algorithm, all these, you need consistency. So. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, and that just demonstrates that they don't know what they're doing. You know, right. um, and I say that lovingly, but, you know, they just don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the mistakes that I've seen with social media and funeral homes, and I've seen this over and over again. And again, I've got some friends of mine in the space that, that do social media for funeral yeah. homes. And I've talked to them at nauseum. And one of the biggest mistakes is that the funeral home owner says, OK, social media is a thing. I know I should be doing it. You know, honey, write a check, you know, or let's just write a check for it. Right. And they're trying to kind of, quote unquote, buy right. social media. Like they buy a yellow page ad or they buy a TV yep. spot and that's completely not true. Social media is really just taking your offline brand and bringing it online, right? And right. Engaging online yep. as you would at a Kiwanis meeting. Uh -huh. um, and that can't be done simply by outsourcing that, you know, that there has to be engagement. So I, I definitely appreciate what you said on that. Um, so yeah, just don't, don't try not to try not to just think about it. Like you're buying uh, social media. Okay. Moving into your world. The next thing I think is digital marketing. Um, to me, this absolutely is, you know, as clear as can be, do not try to do this yourself because there is an expense involved with digital marketing, right? You're paying for ads. You will absolutely bankrupt yourself trying to do this on your own if you don't know what you're doing. So at the end of the day, and Welton can get into this with you, but at the end of the day, you can spend less money and get better results by partnering with a company like Welton's or other, other companies that do that. Yeah, a lot of good ones. But yeah. the digital marketing is very, very complex. So Welton, share with you the audience kind of why you think that's important to outsource that. And I, I do think though, 
you can always YouTube it and learn a lot of these things yourself. Definitely, you can learn it. If you're technical enough, you can definitely learn this on your own. And this is one of those things, first of all, you enjoy doing it. If you enjoy doing it, definitely, right, do it yourself. But you can definitely, we do partner up with quite a bit of um, um, these firms that also do have luxury wise, they do have their own marketing managers as well. The larger firms, they do have somebody dedicated doing marketing already. And they leverage us to supplement what they're doing already. Because mm -hmm. unfortunately, things just keep changing all the time. Right. So they're leveraging us and holding us accountable, holding any agency they use, right? You know, what you and I were talking a little bit prior to this is even Nike, all these large companies, they do outsource some parts of their operation, wherever they're not competent in. So how I see this, this whole outsource model is you're trying to look for your dream team. Let's say, Great. right, if I'm a business owner, I'm, I'm looking for a dream person who can help me with my accounting, with my digital marketing, right? Just like my personal life. I have a landscaper I can rely on. I have a plumber when something goes off, right? right that doesn't go right. I, I know that is the best plumber out there. Right. Like pool guy, all these. And this is the same thing, digital marketing. There's so many different tactics. Yeah. You know, it's interesting too. And if any of, if anybody listening follows Welton, you know, every day he's putting out another video about something else that's changing. Nothing is moving faster than, than the world of digital marketing. All the rules change all the time. Uh, there's opportunities that are missed if you're not partnering with somebody, um, real easy wins to, to ways to elevate yourself in, in search engines and with PPC uh, to lower your cost. If you kind of know what you're doing. Um, I can tell you from experience, I've got a lot of experience with you know, paid search, and I understand it very, very well. And it is very, very complex, right? I mean, when you're buying Google AdWords, there's page rank, there's, there's, you know, auction prices, there's click through rates, there's all these different things that go into this to determine. It's just not like the old days when you wanted to be number one in the yellow pages, you know, you were a a a a a a painting, you know, well, <laughs> larger ad. <laughs> yeah, right. And you need to be like 12 A's to be the top one. It's not like that anymore at all, right? Google is very smart, obviously. And so there's a lot of things that you can do, little tweaks that you can make that can affect, uh, that can actually make you pay less for that keyword and rank higher, you know? Um, so, but that's not going to be, I mean, I've studied this for years and, and, and I barely know what I'm doing. So it's, I, I definitely would not try this on your own. If, if you believe Welton and I, when we're saying that at need and search is where you need to focus, if you want to capture the undecided family, which is really kind of what you should be going after, you have to be really good at the digital marketing side, right? You have to show up when people search any kind of term in your area. You have to be able to have a website that converts. You know, you have to answer the phone, right? It goes on down the whole journey, uh, but it all starts with them clicking your name to start that journey. Um, and that's where a good digital marketer is worth their weight in gold. And they will not cost you money. They will actually make you more money. Um, it's um, investment for sure. In the long run. No, no doubt about it. It is completely short sighted for someone to say, you know, I'll, you know, I don't want to pay the money for that, you know, because to me, this is arbitrage, right? If I'm paying a hundred dollars and I can make one fifty. Well, I'm going to keep putting the hundred in, you know what I mean? Because yeah. that's just money in, money out, right? Uh, and, and a good digital marketer will definitely help you with that. Uh, well, wrapping up, Welton, uh, the last thing uh, I would say would be answering your phones. This what? seems like a simple thing to do, but I wrote an article about this very episode a couple years ago, talking about things funeral home should outsource. And in that article, I said, in absolute, uh, uh, my hand to God, this happened. I called a funeral home and got an answering machine. I almost fell over. Um, I just couldn't believe in 2018 or 2017, whenever that was, that I got an answering machine at a funeral home. And mm -hmm. well, jokingly, there's a couple of places I don't ever want to get an answering machine. Right. You know, if I call the hospital, <laughs> 911, you know, the funeral home, like there needs to be a live person on the other end of that. Oh, yeah. Answering services, listen, if, 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 I mean, the benefit is clear as day, right? You have freedom. You don't have to live at the funeral home. You don't have to let somebody get an answering service. And not only that, I mean, the right answering service, they'll help you handle shopper calls, right? They'll help you, your, your, your families with people that call up and want to know when, you know, Betty Joe's service. I mean, they just really will take a lot of the load off you and let you focus on, you know, uh, whatever else you need to be doing, um, you know, at that time. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely is. 
I think we work with quite a bit of firms that do outsource their their whole uh, entering phone services, but they do sometimes if they want, they still can't have pockets that they still enter the phone themselves and they leverage, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, these entering service after hours. Yeah, and the technology. You don't need to outsource everything. Yeah. yeah, and it's not like, again, it's not like you're giving up control. I mean, you can literally listen in when the answering service is talking to uh, one of the families and you can, they can patch you right in. You can intercept the call. They record. I mean, it's just, it's not about saying, I'm going to let some stranger answer my call. And right. truthfully, the really, the really good answering uh, uh, services out there right now, they even have it dialed in where if you live in the South, they'll have a Southern speaking person answering the phone. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, they're very, very good at what they do. And, you know, again, the, the only reason I can see that you would want to do it is either one, you don't want to give up control or two, you don't want to spend the money. And probably if you were to give up a little bit of that control and spend that money, you'd probably make that up spending right. time doing what you need to be doing and focusing right. kind of on what you need to be doing. So, right. um, well, kind of wrapping up, Welton. So we talked about accounting, aftercare, HR, pre-needs, social media, digital marketing, uh, and answering the phones. Anything right. else? No, it's no. time. Yeah, you're buying time. <laughs> yeah. If all of those are outsourced, right? If you've got partners, and I hate the word outsource, but if you partner with another company to help right. you with those things, then you have all of your time to focus on what you want yeah. to do, right? right? Which, which you know, you love to do. I mean, for me, right. every time I, you know, partner with somebody, it just frees me up to do what I enjoy doing. Uh, um, which is, you know, was that because again, um, and I'll say this and I'll, and we'll, we'll end it, but you know, I think about it where, you know, when I grew up, you know, you, you didn't pay anyone else to change your oil, right? You changed your oil on your own. I don't know how much money I saved on it, but that's just what we did, you know? And I remember when my wife and I got married and, um, I don't know how long we've been married, but we were getting ready to have our house painted and I'm halfway handy. And my wife says, well, why don't you paint the house? Cause I was getting quotes on it. And all I could think about was that, you know, I don't like painting houses, right? Like, can I? Yeah, probably. I could probably get this done, but I don't want to be out painting my house for a week and a half. And what if I fall off that ladder, you know, right. and, and then it became arbitrage too, because if I can make a little bit more than the painter, you know, I should be going to work and letting, you know, him or her paint the house. So for me, it's just, you know, outsourcing lets you focus on what you do best. Um, so. Yeah. Well, good deal. Well, and well, look, this has been fun. This is an episode we wanted to do for, for a little while. So hopefully we've convinced you to at least think about, um, you know, taking some of that load off of you partnering with another company uh, and again, letting you do kind of what you do best. So one part of it, just liberation really will be huge liberation for you. Just even just one things that you outsource it. It doesn't yeah. need to be everything. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, imagine, imagine if you had your day to do what you want to do. Yeah. Right, to what you want to focus on, what makes you passionate, what you're passionate about, what you're happy about. Um, yeah, it is, is definitely liberating. So, okay, cool. Any final thoughts, Welton? No, oh, that's all good and fun. <laughs> good. Well, again, we do appreciate uh, everyone listening. Uh, if you would do us a favor, if you would go to iTunes or your favorite podcast app and leave us a review, we'd certainly appreciate that. It helps other funeral professionals learn about what we do. And last thing I'll say is if you have any ideas on anything you want us to cover, uh, we're getting some feedback from some listeners with some different ideas. If you have any feedback or anything you'd like us to talk about, please just reach out to Welton and I and let us know. So until next time, we appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.